By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back with the color clash. Last week I showed you a match from the group stages. This week I'm, we're going to look at the match played in the top 16. We started this tournament with 55 players with the goal to find out what the best mono colored deck is. So all players in this tournament are playing with the mono colored decks. And of course it is of no surprise that blue is doing quite well. So in this top 16, about half of the field are blue decks, but we also have a lot of other colors represented here, red, white, uh, black, and also green. And one of the players today is playing with green. We have Beastie Boss, he is on mono green, and he's playing with Shenodin Dryads. So I'm really excited to see a deck with uh, with those Dryads in, uh, in there. I think it's really cool. And he's taking on Marco, and Marco is playing mono blue, and um, yeah, it's a blue deck, you know, so it's strong, but it's also cool because it, it has three Mahamoti Jin, so three Papa Moti, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, before I start with the deck text, though, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can choose to skip this part of the video, go to the games first. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps, including a timestamp uh, called MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the tournament website. And uh, if you go there, you can read all about this tournament, check out the decks and also check out the, the specific rules because we've put some specific rules in place to make sure that this was really about mono color decks, that the color that you choose was really number one uh, in your deck. So for example, all the artifacts are restricted and you can only play with eight and also all the non land uh, or all the non basic lands, that's what I should say, are also restricted. So just to make sure that people really stick to their color identity. Um, but like I said, if you want to know more about the rules, check out uh, the description below because there you will find a link to the tournament website. And here we are going to continue with, with the deck decks. And I think I'm going to start with the deck of Marco. Let's take a look at his mono blue build. And here we see the mono blue deck of Marco with a dolphin behind it. We get you dolphin blue, makes sense. Um, looking at this deck, right, we see four control magics and that kind of makes sense in this mono colored battle because I've noticed that a lot of decks are creature heavy also because of course you have that artifact restriction. So it's kind of hard, I guess, in that sense to make a combo deck, although there should be some possibilities. But anyway, most of the decks at this tournament seem to be quite creature heavy. So those four control magics is a good decision. Also, you know, some colors find it really difficult to deal with in shamans, you know. Uh, black is, of course, a good example, but also red. In this case, he's playing green, so green should have Tranquility. But remember, this is a format without sideboard. So if your opponent isn't playing Tranquility main, you cannot board it in, unless, of course, you use your Ring of Maroof to find it. Uh, talking about the ring, by the way, we don't see a Ring of Maroof in this deck. When we look at the artifacts, they're quite powerful, right? We see Disrupting Scepter, we see a Gem Day Tome. So this is really a control deck, right? And of course, uh, together with the four control magics that I just talked about, in combination with the Time Elemental, we see a beautiful Vesuvan Double Ganger in here as well. Of course, we see four counter spells. We also see a Spell Blast and a Mana Drain. So there's quite a lot of counter magic in this deck. Uh, and then we also see some nice beefy creatures in the form of three Mahamoti Jins. So that's quite nice. He's also playing with three Surrender Befreets, playing with two Boomerangs. So this is... This is just looking like a good solid deck. I think the biggest problem for this deck is if your opponent is going too quickly. And I mean, he is playing against Mono Green. So I think Mono Green has a chance here. I think if Mono Green can be aggressive enough, they can win it. I think if Mono Blue manages to kind of get into the late game, Mono Blue is definitely going to crush Green. But I think there's an option for Green here for sure. Talking about that, let's take a look at the Mono Green deck of Beastie Boss. And here we see the deck of Beastie Bus Mono Green. And I have to say, I really like this deck photo. I think it's super cool. And Mono Green, you know, it has, it's got a special place in my heart. You know, it, it, it does so well at the tournaments. And I'm really happy to see a Mono Green deck here in the top 16. Like I said, when I discussed, uh, you know, Mono Blue, I think the goal of this Mono Green deck is to just go faster than the opponent, right? And I think this Mono Green deck can outrun the blue deck, but it's going to be tough, but it's definitely possible. So we're seeing a lot of one drops, right? We've got the Shenonin Dryads, we've got the Lanawar Elves, we've got Scavenger Folks, we've got Script Sprites. So there's just a lot of one offs. And then we've got a couple of two drops, we've got three drops. So there's really a nice buildup 
in this deck, like one, two, three, and then at the top end, we've got the Urnum Jins and of course also the If Biff Afrid. I also really like the Killer Bees here as a one-off. I think it's a great mana sink. And of course, there are Berserks in this deck, making this deck very, very like dangerous to play against, right? What if your opponent has, you know, NY Luli Wolf to give a plus one plus one and uh, a Giant Grove and then a Berserk? I mean, that can add up really, really quick. I also like the... Um, uh, the Whirling Dervish's main, you know, remember this is no sideboard, so you kind of have to make that decision. And of course, there's a lot of mono black in this mono color tournament, so Whirling Dervish is really good. And the nice thing about it is that even if your opponent isn't playing black, like today is playing mono blue, Whirling Dervish is still a good card. It's still like for two green mana, it's a one one. You can pump it with your Pendlehaven. You know, you can you can also make it bigger, of course, with your Wallowy Wolf. And as soon as it manages to deal damage. It grows itself. It gets a plus one plus one counter. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's a card that can get out of hand quite fast. So you're kind of forcing your opponent to block the Dervish, uh, which is always tricky against a green deck because you never know if they have a giant growth in hand. Um, by the way, talking about the Pendlehaven, all the non basic lands are restricted in this format. Uh, so that also makes it a little bit more difficult for green, I guess, because Pendlehaven is also restricted. And of course, Pendlehaven is a true all star, uh, you know, in the green decks. So that is a little bit problematic uh, for green, but I think it's still doable, you know, to make a really cool mono green list within the rules. And I think this list proves that. Like I said, I think if Beastie Boss is able to go fast, faster than, you know, than Marco, he can definitely win. My fear is that, you know, blue is going to stabilize and then it's going to be really tough because what you're kind of missing in blue is your direct, or in green, I mean, is your direct damage to finish it off. Something that, Red, of course, is really, really good at. Now, um, he does play with one Hurricane, so that's a way to kind of get through. He's also playing uh, with uh, the Winter Blast, so Winter Blast is a great way to kill, of course, the smaller flyers of your opponent, but also to tap down the army of your opponent, and in that way, like, kind of pull through with an Alpha Strike and still win the game. So there are a few ways that lead to Rome for boss. You know, it's not just the combat damage. He's got a couple of tricks. Also, of course, if Biff Afrit, the, the one-off that he's playing, has a, a building hurricane effect that he's the only one that can use that effect because his opponent is playing mono blue and he's the only one with green mana. So again, that's an advantage, but he's only playing a one of though. So, you know, that's not very consistent. You cannot rely on it, but it, it's an alternative win con, I guess. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Beastie Bus. We looked at the deck of Marco. I think this could be a very close and interesting match right here in the top 16. Let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. We have Boss sitting on the right with Mono Green. I believe he's on the play, taking on Marco. He's sitting on the left. He's playing Mono Blue. There's the forest, Lana Rells. Okay, so far things are going great for Green. Can he play out like a big creature? Maybe a spitting slug next turn. Oh, Library of Alexandria for Marco. That is devastating. Oh, this is so annoying here for Boss. And there we see a discard by Marco. So interesting that he chooses to use that main phase. Discarding an island. Perhaps his hand is full of lands and he was hoping to find a Black Lotus or a Mox. Attacking here for one, putting Marco on 19 and there's a Whirling Dervish. Okay, so this is the thing that Boss needs to do now, right? He just has to accept the fact that Marco has this Library of Alexandria and he just has to keep pounding and pounding and pounding, forcing Marco to play out his defenses. So Marco playing an island here. Let's see what he's gonna do. Passing the turn. So now we see Boss drawing, probably gonna attack for two damage. Or perhaps he's got an Urnum, for example, then he would play a forest, use the Lanover for mana, play an Urnum. Nope, he's not attacking for two here. And we see Marco dropping to 17 and a first counter on the Dervish. So it gets a plus one, plus one counter, becomes a two, two. Let's see if he can put some more pressure on the board. Yes, he can in the form of a Wailuli Wolf, a card from uh, Arabian Nights. One green and one to cast. You can tap it to give target creature plus one, plus one. So it's quite good. A nice combat trick here. We see Mark, of course, using his uh, Library of Alexandria. Ooh, even drawing more cards with the Ancestral Recall. I think, I mean, if you're boss at this stage, you just have to accept that Marco has got tons of cards, you know, but whatever. Um, you're just gonna try to outpace him. So three cards in hand for boss, and I have no idea how many cards Marco has. I guess 11, perhaps. You know, seven, activating, library, going to eight. 
playing the Ancestral Recall, going up to 10, drawing a card, having 11. And there's another island here for Marco. I mean, a Surrender Pafrit would be really good. This is what he needs, actually. This Black Lotus can get him out of trouble. He could crack the Lotus to play something big. You could also consider just playing a Surrender and keep Counter Magic open. Tapping four here. Okay, there's a Control Magic. So now he's gonna start stealing stuff. Taking the Whirling Dervish, the 2-2 two -two creature. And I mean, if you're Buster really hoping here, oh, there we see a time walk. This is unfortunate for Boss because now Marco can start playing this game where, you know, he's got the Dervish to block, but also he can keep two blue open to counter. And that's of course a problem for Boss because if you're Boss, you're hoping to have that one combat moment where you can play Giant Grove Berserk or whatever, you know, and just deal a heap of damage and, and kill Marco with one like good attack. But that's gonna be really tough if the blue opponent has the two blue mana open. So I think Marco is going to play a very control game from this point forward, also with, of course, that library on the board. And remember, he's playing with four control magics. Ooh, look at that, he's even attacking here. So Bus can choose to trade the creatures. Actually, he cannot because it still has summoning sickness. Okay, he is going to block, put a giant growth on there. Let's see if we can see a counter spell here by Marco. There we see the counter. So that means the wolf dies. So one of the things that Bus could have done is first cast a giant grove. And I know that sounds weird, but first cast a giant grove, see if Marco's gonna counter it. If he's not gonna counter it, then decide to block. But um, yeah, it's, it's not looking great here for Bus. Perhaps if he can find a flyer, he can start flying over. There's the attack with the Lanawer, dealing another point of damage here. I mean, an if Biff Afrit would be quite nice if he could play that out. A 3-3 flyer with that hurricane build in effect. Well, that's gonna be, yeah, just a pass turn. And you can already look at, uh, you know, Buss's body language. Arms are crossed. He kind of knows what's happening here. So now he's gonna untap with the 2-2 Dervish. He can attack, make it into a 3-3. And I don't think I saw a Tranquility in Boss's deck, so that's a little bit problematic. I think Control Magics are going to be quite good in this matchup for Marco. And remember, he is playing a full place out of those. So there's the attack again. Are we going to see a Berserk here to kill it? Yep. I think this is a good decision. The question is, are we going to see a Counterspell? And I guess that Boss just top decked that Berserk, by the way, or else he would have done that last turn after the Counterspell on the Giant Grove. So at least this is some good news for Boss, who's able to uh, get rid of that creature. But yeah, it is a two for one, of course. But at least it's something. There's a Maze of If. Oh, another annoying card here for Boss. Because it can stop the ground creatures. Well, any creature, actually. Also the Flyers. And, uh, you know, this is not the game that Boss wants to play, and especially with Marco with that Loa. I mean, this is, uh, this is gonna be really tough. And Marco drawing a card for turn, gonna go up to eight. And we're just gonna have to wait and see how he's gonna play it out. Now remember, he is playing with some, uh, some creatures, thankfully. So this is not going to be a long and grindy match, I think, because he's playing with uh, three Mahamoti Jins and three Surrender Pafrits. So as soon as he finds those, he can start attacking through the air. And he's going to tap two blue here. There is a Chaos Orb. And Boss just drawing card number three is going to pass here. Still the arms crossed. And I mean, perhaps for Boss, you know, he's thinking, you know, I'm just gonna play along to get some more information about the deck of Marco for game number two and game number three. Remember, this is a top 16 match, so the winner will advance to the quarterfinals. That you can also see right here on Timmy Talk. So now he's gonna tap six. Are we gonna see Mahamoti Jin? Papa Moti, the 5 6 powerhouse. It's so huge. And I mean, it's gonna be really tough for Boss. 
playing another forest passing to turn. And I think, I mean, Marco is just gonna win this in four turns, I think. Also looking at the lists. I mean, Bus could of course play a Berserk. That's an option, but then still he would take 10 points of damage. Let's see if he's gonna do that. Playing that Berserk, and that does mean that Bus found the Giant Groves and the Berserks. I mean, this game could have gone really different for Bus. There's a counter spell, but counter magic. Oh, it's so difficult to deal with for these green decks. So that's a hit of five. Bus dropping here to 11. And that there's the untap. There's a Mistress Factory. And just to pass. And I mean, this is Marco is living a life of luxury with that uh, Library of Alexandria very early in the game. He's got complete control. Drawing another card there from the Loa. There's the attack, so he's gonna put Bus here on six. And this is gonna be a short game one. And what is Marco gonna do? Does he maybe have a time elemental? That would be cool to see a time elemental in action. Okay, a ghost ship. Also, of course, a good uh, creature in mono blue. It's a two four flyer from the dark. Three blue to regenerate. And there we see Bus picking up the cards. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a little moment there where Bus had a chance, but you know, finding that Black Lotus for Marco and then uh, playing Control Magic and then playing the Time Walk, that was really, really devastating. There was nothing that Bus could do here. Marco simply found all the cards that he needed to, uh, to win this game number one, but it's only game number one. This is a best of three, right? So uh, we've got to wait and see. Both players are shuffling up and we are going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Bus still on the play after losing that first game. Again, a great opener for him here with the Lanawar Elves turn one. So five cards in hand for Bus passing the turn. So Marco not finding a Loa. So that's the first good news for Bus here. Just playing an island and go. Let's see if he can put some more pressure on the table. Maybe another forest and a spitting slug. Okay, a script sprites, one one flyer. And another Lanawar Elves. So no lands, but maybe this is even better. Just, just playing a lot of bodies and uh, start dealing some damage next turn. Let's see what Marco can do. There's another island. Tapping both. And there's again the Chaos Orb. So I wonder if he's gonna use it this time. We didn't see a flip last game. Wasn't needed, of course. He was so far ahead there. And now we're probably gonna see exactly three creatures into the red zone, putting Marco here on 17. And a pass though, ooh, that is unfortunate. I mean, if you're boss, you really just wanna keep playing out threats, but it's not happening though. That is unfortunate here for boss. I was really expecting to see at least another creature. Scavenger folk would have been nice, for example. There we see another island being played here by Marco. Island number three. And next turn, he can start playing those control magics again, right? And that's kind of risky for Bus. Those control magics are really, uh, can really be a game changer. Let's see if Bus can find another forest, perhaps a creature he can cast. Tapping three here, it seems. Okay, there we see the Killer Bee. So Killer Bee is a 01 flyer from Legends. And for one green, you can give it plus one, plus one. And I mean, the problem here for Bus is that he's not finding more forests. That is the thing. Marco not flipping on anything yet, just passing the turn. I wonder if he's got another control magic. And if so, what creature he's gonna take? Perhaps a Lanawar Elves, because Bus is really low on mana. He needs those Lanawar Elves to kind of generate some mana for him. So Marco six in hand in the tank here. Perhaps he doesn't have another island. That would be great news for Bus, of course. Because his deck really kind of needs, you know, four mana. A 
Okay, here we see action. So there's a maze of if. So no island. Tapping three here though, what is he gonna do? Psionic Blast, what is he gonna blast away? A lot of where else? No, he's gonna take care of the killer bees. It does mean two damage for Marcos. It's actually not too bad for Boss. It's gonna drop to, uh, Marcos gonna drop to 14. I think the, the maze is annoying though, but it's better than a control magic. What can he do here? It looks like Boss has options in the tank. You're kind of tapping his hand there, looking at his cards, five cards in hand. Doesn't have any more forests, it seems, but then again, he's playing mono green. Who cares? Don't need a lot of forests. There's the attack with three. Probably gonna see the maze here on one of the creatures. I would definitely take the script sprites here because exactly, they don't generate any mana. So that means two points of damage for Marco. Ooh, there's a scavenger folk. That That's actually kind of good because of that Chaos Orb. He's forcing Marco to kind of use that Chaos Orb. Or of course he could kind of think, okay, you know what? You're gonna use your scavenger folk for it also fine. Because if you flip, there's always a chance you miss the flip. But it at least puts some pressure here on Marco. And then I wonder if Bus wants to use it. Ooh, island number four. Are we gonna see a control magic? He's tapping the four lands so quickly though, untapping them. Did he change his mind? That went so quick. I'm like, there's a control magic. And Marco looking at his hand, five cards in hand it seems. Also five cards in hand for boss. And I am rooting a little bit for Bus here, to be honest, because I really feel that he's kind of the underdog in this matchup. And of course, he's also a game behind. So I'm hoping for game number three here. Ooh, he's gonna tap. He is gonna tap the four. So are we gonna see the control magic? Nope, we're gonna see a ghost ship. Also a great card here. So it's kind of leaving an opening here for Boss to use that scavenger folk to take care of the uh, Chaos Orb. I wonder if he's gonna do it. Another thing he could do is just attack with everything. Maybe he's got a giant growth in hand, you know, and whatever blocks the pirate ship, he kills it. A lot of lines here to take. Tapping two first, it seems. Playing a Wailuli Wolf. Tapping for green, yeah, using the scavenger folk to take care of the orb, that makes sense. Probably gonna just pass turn here. I think for Bus, it's also really gonna, gonna be like waiting for the right moment to pull through, to choose, you know, your giant growth berserk, Wailuli Wolf action, but it's gonna be tough. And I think for Marco, what you gotta do now is just be super careful, which is not the most exciting to look at, but I think it's probably the best way for him to go. Playing a Library of Alexandria and a Mox Sapphire tapping six. Oh, there's a Papa Moti. I do like the aggression here of Marco. I think the average blue player probably would have like played it slower, slow rolled, keep blue mana open to counter, but this is much more fun to look at. Papa Moti hitting the board again. And it's just, it's just too much power, you know, for the mono green deck to deal with. It's not over yet, but it's, it's so tough. Also with the Maze of If on the board, it's gonna tap four. Okay, there's an Urnum. Okay, you know, that's some, at least it's a big body in combination with the Giant Grove, it can kill a lot. So passing the turn here. I wonder if Marco's gonna swing in with the Modi. I think I would, why not? You've got the maze, you've got the ghost ship to block with. I mean, it's pretty safe to just attack with your Modi. I am still hoping to also see that Fizuban Double Ganger in the deck of Marco. I think it's such a beautiful card. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. And there you can kind of see Buzz. Oh yeah, it's that, it, that, that time again. I think Control Magic in this matchup is really, really overpowered. There's the attack for five. 
velocity dropping to 15. And passing the turn. So this is just, it was already difficult with Boss you know, having the earn him on his side and now it's close to impossible for him. He's already down a game, needs to win this to advance to the quarterfinals. It's gonna be so difficult though. Looking at his hand, five cards in hand. It makes sense that he needs time. He's probably trying to figure out, is there a way that I can still kind of get through? I mean, Marco is on 12. So, you know, if you can get like two giant grows and a berserk, you're probably there. I just don't think you're gonna get there anymore. But it, I mean, if you can. But I think Marco is too good of a player to, to let that happen. So Boss really in the tank here. Tapping four, are we gonna see another Urnum? Another Urnum, I thought maybe if it would have been an if if a free, that would have been better for him. At least the Urnum, you know, can block the Urnum, which is something. But it's looking so good for Marco. He can attack again for five, put Boss on 10. And there we see the Scripps Frights gets forest walked by the stolen Urnum. There we see another island for Marco. And you know, despite the fact that Boss had good openings in, in both the games, right? He found a lot of where else turn one, which is kind of a dream opener for, for Mono Green. But yeah, the follow up just wasn't there. Here's the attack for five. Boss on 10 now. Yeah, Marco really dictating this match in game one and now in game two. And also Marco is quite lucky finding that maze of if, of course. I mean, remember the non-basic lands are restricted in this format. Looks like he's gonna tap four. Are we gonna see another control magic? Oh, he's gonna tap more, yeah, Brain Geyser. Brain Geyser, really nice AS Altered Brain Geyser. Also, the playmat is from AS Alters. You can find him on Instagram. He makes some sweet alters. A really nice guy as well. I met him at a tournament in Leeuwarden. And I think in Sweden also. Anyway, uh, here we see a Black Lotus being played out by Marco. Yeah, I mean... It's, it feels like it's all going to be downhill from here for Boss. Going through his hand again. Going through the motion. Playing a desert. Really cool card. Not going to help him much though. He also has to give Forest Walk now to one of the creatures. Probably to the Modi. Although maybe he should give it to the Ghost Ship instead. Because he can chum block the Modi then I guess. As you can see, I fast forwarded it a little bit because there were some glitches here. And the bus was really in the tank, so now it looks like he's gonna do something. I mean, if he can find a way out of this, he's a miracle worker. I don't see one, so let's see what he can do. Tapping the desert and the forest here, it seems. Oh, what is that card in hand? What is his big plan? I just cannot imagine. Okay, he's playing a Winter Blast. Oh, that is interesting. So he's gonna tap down some creatures. Perhaps just to go ship. And I guess he's explaining now what the card does. So it's um, one green and X, tap X target creatures and deal two damage to all the flying creatures tapped this way. Oh, look at that. Just tapping the Urnum Jin. Remember, Marco still has that Black Lotus to sack. I guess he's gonna go all in with an Alpha Strike. And, you know, tries to put all his eggs in the one creature that can get through. I mean, he can attack with three creatures here. The Urn and Waluli Wolf and the Scrub Sprites. Put his Lanower Elves and the Forests untapped 
because of the mana and perhaps he can find like double giant grove berserk he's got to play towards his outs you know and if marco has the counter spell he's got the counter spell you know but at least he tried you gotta play towards your outs you gotta give it a try exactly there's the attack i'm loving this loving this play by bus look at marco now kind of looking at his cards remember he's also playing with boomerang and with counter spells so this is super risky there's a pretty big chance this is not going to work but hey if it works he can win the game right here there's the maze of if on the urnum and now marco has to decide what to block with the ship gonna go for the script sprites so the waluli wolf is gonna go through now before damage is dealt boss will have to do his magic i'm expecting double giant growth berserk that would mean 14 points of damage there's the first giant growth no counter spell from Marco, so it's now a 4-4. There's the second tap. It's now an 8-8. Or actually, it's an 8-4 because only the uh, power doubles. No counter spell. And if this is it, it's actually not enough, though. There's another Berserk, though. 16-4. Are we going to see the counter spell by Marco? Second, the Lotus. Boomerang. Oh, that is nasty. You're a nasty man, Marco. Nasty man. But I get it. I get it. That's 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 why Boomerang is such a good card, especially in this matchup. And uh, boss, I mean, respect for you playing towards your outs. That is what you have to do. And unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. I mean, Blue was in control in both games. It happens. I mean, Green really needed a perfect day, day here and Blue needed a bad day. That simply didn't happen. So Marco will move on to the top eight, to the quarterfinals of the Color Clash. Talking about the, um, the quarterfinals, we will have the, the quarterfinals coming up next week. So if you enjoyed this tournament, keep an eye on the channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not a sub subscriber yet so you don't miss a single update. And if you're already subscribed, please consider liking, sharing, and commenting this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also decide to become a patron of the channel just like Marco and Boss that already starts for $1 a month. And for that dollar, uh, you can become a member or you can have access, I should say, to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll and you can join tournaments like this online. I organize tournaments every two, three months or so, you know, and you can join those if you're a patron. So please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And now let's go to the end scroll and have a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.